بحكي شيء Uh, as my friend uh, Nikki just uh, introduced you, uh, uh, introduced uh, me to you. Uh, I have been working in the career uh, maybe for uh, more than 15 years. Uh, I worked in uh, different companies, uh, service companies. Um, I have uh, exposed to uh, interpretation work as well and data analysis. So our main uh, objective for uh, this uh, three days workshop. Let me go through this quickly. Uh, we are going to talk about an introduction to seismic. Okay, so um, our workshop is introduction to seismic method, acquisition, processing, and interpretation. Um, this workshop is an introduction to uh, a full course, as my uh, friend Nikki just said. Uh, the course uh, should run uh, this July, maybe. Um, it might undergo uh, rescheduling. Uh, the full course meant to target geoscience related student and fresh graduates. Uh, maybe uh, the entry level uh, geophysist and uh, geoscientist as well, juniors. Uh, the course uh, duration, the full course should be maybe uh, ranging from 23 to 25 hours for one month. Okay, and of course, for the full course, uh, it will be covering uh, several practical exercises on softwares. Uh, the objective also of the full course is to cover generic knowledge about geophysics and its role in oil and gas exploration, uh, know about the different types of seismic acquisition. Basic to intermediate knowledge about seismic processing and interpretation. Learn about AVO and AVA in theory and practice. Learn how to integrate different available tools together. Okay, let's now go to the uh, to our uh, workshop. We will be covering uh, acquisition in one day. Second day it will be for uh, processing, and third day will be for uh, processing. So let's first start why. Seismic method is the preferable method in oil and gas exploration. Then uh, we need to understand how the seismic image is built. And we will go after this in type of seismic acquisition and survey design. And what is OBN uh, ocean bottom node? It is the most advanced technique now in the acquisition. I will give you a, a quick uh, uh, knowledge about it. Um, from time to time, you need to update yourself with the most recent technique. The second day will be role of seismic processing, generic processing flow and main processing steps. And the third day will be types and application of interpretation in addition to AVO and AVA. So, the physical methods, uh, has a lot of uh, of types. Uh, I think uh, most of you studied this in the uh, school or in the college. There is the gravity method, magnetic method, electromagnetic, geothermal, uh, radiometric method, and of course our main method, seismic method, acquisition, processing, interpretation. The physical method mainly divided into two main parts, the active methods, the passive methods, Active method like gravity, magnetic, radioactive, and the passive method, one of them is seismic method. The physical method responds to the change in physical properties of the subsurface media. As we just said, it's divided into passive and active method. Okay, the definition of the passive method, it detects the variation within the natural field associated with the Earth, such as gravity, magnetic, and some electric, radioactive, and geothermal methods. The active methods are artificially generated signal transmitted into the ground and then modified the received signal, like seismic method. Okay, 
a quick comparison between the uh, different methods so we can know the advantage and disadvantage of each one and why you are specifically using seismic in oil and gas exploration. For the gravity method, for example, gravity data can be used to define regional tectonic settings because gravity anomaly are caused by heterogeneity distribution of rock of different densities and depths. So due to the variation in the density and the depths of the rock, the gravity method gives uh, the gravity an, uh, reading gives the uh, anomaly. A limitation for gravity method is the uh, it is lower resolution than seismic, or it is used for regional uh, scale studies. So its resolution is uh, is weak. It's not it's not uh, high as seismic. The magnetic method will uh, will give uh, almost the same result uh, as gravity. So the magnetic data may be used to separate basin from non-basin to find the shape and form of a basin. Also, magnetic method, it depends on the variation of the magnetic field or magnetic property of the rocks. As also, it gives a lower resolution than seismic. So if, if now we went to the seismic, the application of seismic, in, on the seismic section, you can do interpretation. You can acquire the stacking velocity uh, values. You can detect DHI, direct hydrocarbon indicator. We will explain what is the direct hydrocarbon indicator in the third day. Uh, integrate the, with well log data. Also, the well location decision is done on the seismic section. Help in understanding a lot of reservoir properties. The limitation of seismic method, one of them might be uh, to a some extent, the seismic is limited for the very thin layer. Uh, high changes in topography, resource limitation due to large amount of data, which directly increase the time and cost of the process. The limitation of the seismic in term of data, it can be sometimes overcome in the processing step. As we know now, we have the acquisition, um, processing, and interpretation. So the limitation of seismic during the acquisition, sometimes it can be overcome in the processing part. So through this quick comparison, uh, the output of the seismic image give a better resolution for uh, the interpretation of seismic. Okay, so the first step always is the seismic acquisition, where data is acquired either in onshore or offshore. Acquisition normally runs by service company, and we will go today through different type of acquisition. The next step will be seismic processing, where data is processed in the processing data center. And of course, sometimes there is a processing in the field. The seismic interpretation is the third step where data is interpreted and analyzed by the owner companies. Interpretation include much more analysis than horizon and fall picking. Okay, we already mentioned this uh, application, the seismic method application in the comparison. It is the same application, interpretation, acquiring uh, stacking velocity, defining the direct hydrocarbon indicator, and the limitation, we just mentioned it in the table. Okay, that's the uh, comparison or why, why we use uh, the seismic method. It is preferable in oil and gas exploration. Okay, and now we know that the seismic divided into acquisition, processing, and interpretation. Now I will go to a, a little bit higher level. I will going to define with you some definitions so we can understand the nature of the seismic. Okay. We will start with the wave. What is the seismic wave? Seismic waves are waves of energy that travel through Earth's layer. The waves are said to cause elastic deformation consisting of alternating compression and dilation of the particles in the materials. Waves can travel through a body or along the surface of a body. The second definition is the wave front. 
Seismic energy can be considered as a wave front or as a series of ray emanating from the shot. The ray pass. For simplicity, we do not deal with wave front, we use ray pass. A ray is perpendicular everywhere to a wave front. So if this is our wave and this is the wave front, the wave front will always be represented with a perpendicular line. Uh, for simplicity, it, the, we use the ray pass rather than using wave front, so we can explain. While I'm, I'm explaining to you now, when I'm talking about a wave or reflection or refraction, we represent it with a, a ray pass. This line. This is the representing or the line which represents the wave front. Okay, the wave parameters. Uh, uh, some parameters associated with a wave recorded as a function of time or as a function of distance, like peak, trough, amplitude, period, and wave height. The importance of this parameter, it defines the wave itself. So we use, we use this parameter in different ways, in different equations, so we can compute some parameters. They are all related to each other. The peak is the highest point in the wave on the cycle. The trough is the lowest point and it is negative value. Okay. The frequency equal one divided by the period. What is the period? It is the distance between two consecutive peaks or consecutive trough. Okay, this point is one of the most important point in our presentation today. The reflection. Okay, according to Snell's law uh, of, uh, of reflection, we have here different sources or different shots, and here we have different deformed. What happens in the field, in offshore or onshore, in land or marine, I mean, when you emit the sound source, sound wave, and it meet a horizon or layer, it will reflect again with the same angle of incident. So we have here incident angle, and we have here reflection angle. Whenever we have a horizontal layer or surface, the wave that is shot, that is reflected on the horizon, it will go reflected with the same angle of incidence. This is the angle of incidence, and this is the angle of reflection. Okay, <clears throat> that's what happened on the surface. Okay, this is the surface, and this is the subsurface. This is our horizon. What happened in this point? This is called the common midpoint. What is the common midpoint? It is the midpoint between, the mid distance between the shot and the receiver. It is the midpoint here. So if you extend from the surface, sorry, from the horizon or the layer or in the subsurface to the surface, it will be exactly the same distance from here to here, okay? So the common midpoint represents the midpoint between the shot and receiver. Under this common, common midpoint here, let's imagine the, that we are drawing a trace, okay? Like this one. So this, the distance x, the offset, and the time x. What is the offset? The offset is the distance between the shot and receiver. So this is from here to here is offset one, and from here to here is offset two, and from here to here is offset three, which represents the distance x, the offset. And this is the time x, okay? The time or the depth will always be uh, the vertical x, and for the horizontal x, it represents the offset or the distance. What happened here when we do this reflection? Under the CMP point, 
you will have your trace. This is the seismic trace. Okay, the seismic trace. This is called trough and this is peak, as we just explained here. The maximum negative value is the trough and the maximum positive value is the peak. So if you transpose this wave to be in a vertical position, this is the, the, the time x here, okay? If you transpose it to a vertical position, it will be, the wave will be like this. This is the trough and this is the peak. How do we gain this trough and this peak? That's what we are going to, to explain now. What is important really to me to understand that when we have several traces, several consecutive traces, we sum them together to get something called CMB gathers. And the gathering of CMB gather or submission of CMB gather results in the stack. So by the end of the day, having such a reflector or a horizon resulted firstly from gathering different gathers or stack. And those traces are coming originally from this process. Okay, let me summarize it again, because this is really very, very important. You have the shots and the receiver. We shot. This is the incident tray with the incident angle. It is reflected according to Snell's law because we have here a horizontal reflector. So it is reflected with the same angle of incidence, the angle of reflection, and it is reflected to the G4. We have the CMP, the common midpoint between shot and receiver. Under the midpoint, exactly under the midpoint, you will have the trace. Okay. You will have the trace, trough and peak, trough and peak, like this one. The submission of these traces together give you something called CMB gathers, and summing different CMB gathers will result in the stack. This is the stack. And this is our horizon. Okay, What's, what, what makes us have a, a, a trough or peak? You have, sometimes you have trough, Sometimes you have peak, like you can see here, this black, for example, here it is a, is a peak and the white is the trough or negative value. Why do we have this? This happens according to something called acoustic impedance. Okay, acoustic impedance. What is the acoustic impedance? We have two, two terms, a reflection coefficient and acoustic impedance. So reflection coefficient or re reflectivity is the ratio of the amplitude of wave reflected off and interface to that of the wave incidence upon it. It's basically the percentage of energy that will be reflected. Let me make it more simple. We have acoustic impedance, which equal to rho two V two. Rho two here, the rho is the density of the layer and V is the velocity of the layer. So the acoustic impedance is the ratio between rho 2 v2 minus rho 1 v1 divided by rho 2 v2 plus rho 1 v1. The rho v is the reflection coefficient, okay? So rho 2 v2 minus rho 1 v1 divided by rho 2 v2 plus, plus rho 1 v1. This is the acoustic impedance. The reflection coefficient equal the acoustic impedance of layer two. Two here represents the number of the layer. Let me uh, make it clear. Rho two V two is the uh, velocity and density of the second layer subtracted by multiplication of density and velocity of the first layer divided by their submission again. So the reflection coefficient will equal will be equal acoustic impedance of the second layer minus acoustic impedance of first layer divided by acoustic impedance of second layer plus acoustic impedance of first layer. So RC will be trough if it is negative and will be peak if it is positive. Okay. Uh, 
let me uh, explain it again on this display. Uh, this is a layer, first layer, and this is a second layer, and this is uh, again maybe a third layer, or we can call it a first layer because it has the same lossology. Okay, so here we have a value. Uh, the acoustic impedance here has a value. Row two V two has a value. Maybe let's call it, for example, uh, seven. Maybe. And row one V one has another value. Maybe let's call it uh, ten, for example. So we have here ten, and we have here seven. So if we subtract it seven minus ten, here it will be negative three, and here the submission will be thirteen, for example. So in total value it will be negative value okay because here is a smaller the value of row 2 v2 is less than the value of row 1 v1 so whenever you have row 2 v2 value smaller than row 1 v1 or less than row 1 v1 you will always have a negative value okay when you have a negative value it will be trough the reflection coefficient will be trough, giving you trough. This red is trough. When the row 2 V2 is greater than row 1 V1, it will give you a positive value. It will give you a peak. Okay. Let me explain it one more time because this is a very important thing in your seismic section. You have different values. You have red and blue. You have black and white. You have black and white, negative, positive, trough, peak. This is the reason why we have negative or positive amplitude value. Again, here you have row 2 V2 value and row 1 V1 value. Whenever you have this value, row 2 V2 is less than row 1 V1, you will have a negative value, trough. If you have row 2 V2 greater than row 1 V1, you will have a positive value, a peak. That's why you have peak and trough, peak and trough. Okay, I will go now to another point, the uh, seismic acquisition. We have, as you know, 2D and 3D, and sometimes we have something called a 4D. The 2D uh, survey, or uh, it's the 2D line, uh, sometimes it might be uh, regular, and sometimes it is not regular. In area with complicated structure, it is better to interpret on data resulting from a 3D survey to avoid error. Let me go deeper in this point. Let me explain this slide first, then I will go back to the other example. This is a comparison between the 2D and 3D layout. In the field, the 3D survey is regular grid. Okay, it is a regular grid. This, for example, is a shot and this is the receiver. Okay, so all the time 3D is a regular grid. The 2D, it is not always regular. However, sometimes, sometimes you might have 2D lines uh, in a regular shape. Maybe you have sometimes like this line and this line, it's regular. They are parallel regularly. And this line, and you might have another one here as a 2D line. Sometimes 2D is regular, sometimes it is not. Okay, that's the, the main comparison for the layout. What is the advantage of the 3D on the 2D? Normally, due to the grid layout and the distribution, for example, this is a, a receiver. The, this one that I'm, I'm pointing on the point here, the white one, this is the receiver. So it receives reflection from all the sources surrounding it, okay? This point receives reflection from here, from here, from here, from here. So it is recorded many times for this point, one, two, three, four, five, six. It is recorded six times, okay? While here, it is only recorded maybe two times, okay? So the power or the resolution for this point is higher than this one. 
uh, shortly I will show you a video to explain the coverage or the fold or the power of the stack. Okay, that's the main advantage for the 3D upon the 2D. Uh, due to the regularity and that the number of uh, shots is higher than the 2D. Okay, let me show you one of the advantages of the 2D line. Does the 2D line has an advantage? Yes. I'm sorry. The 2D sometimes has an advantage. Yes, it has an advantage. For example, this is a glacial area, okay, where you need to acquire seismic data. Due to the nature of the area and the topography, you cannot acquire a 3D acquisition or you cannot put a 3D layout. You are only allowed to have uh, limited 2D lines like this. You cannot build a 3D grid. So somehow you do your 2D lines and try as much as possible to make it regular. As you can see here, parallel lines and two and other two lines like this here somehow it's a little bit regular you can say it's a minor 3d but it is not an actual 3d so due to the nature of the area you cannot do a 3d survey so you it is enough or you 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 don't have much choices you do 2d lines separate 2d lines like this separate 2d lines so that's one of the advantage of the 2d uh, due to topography and due to the nature of the area, you only can shoot 2D. So uh, one more, uh, one, one advantage also of the 2D, it is cheaper than 3D. So for example, if you are going to uh, check a virgin area, you need to do some seismic. So you do a reg regional 2D surveys. Most of, uh, of the acquisition done, uh, if you are going to a new area, you, you don't go ahead and shoot a full 3D on the area. First, you do something like a pilot or uh, a 2D uh, acquisition to check upon the area and to have a, a seismic before shooting the full 3D. Okay, that's also one of the advantages of the 2D. It's cheap. And by the end of the day, 2D will give you a seismic section, exactly like the 3D, but of course, as we just explained, the 3D resolution or power will be always better and higher than 2D. Let me first show you a, a, a quick video about the fold or the uh, power. Okay. Okay. Um, so here, what's what's happening here? This is the shot. Uh, sorry, this is the our our shot and receiver to the left and set of receiver to the right. This spread is called symmetric spread. Okay, let me repeat it again. Hmm. 
this is the shot and this is set of hydrophones or receiver and this is a set of receiver he shots and receive okay as we, we explained with the angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection because it has a horizontal reflector or horizon Okay, it will be done for the old set. Then, resulting in CMP. This is the common midpoint. Okay, for this one, reflected here, this is the mid distance between shot and receiver, representing this point. So we will have different common midpoints, different common midpoints. Then I will move this movement. Okay, let me get it again, please. That's a very important one. Again. So he will move from this point to this point. This is called shoot point interval. Okay, he will move from here to here. This is called shoot point interval. And he will do the same process again. Let me pause. He will do the same process again. He will shot and receive, shot and receive, shot and receive. So to have a new common midpoint. So now he had a new common midpoint after he changed his location. He will change his location again from this to this and from this to this. And every time he does the same. He shot and received, shot and received, resulting in different common midpoints. Okay. When he stops or after we finish the, the shooting, in each time we have common midpoint, common midpoint, common midpoint. The total number or the sum of these points or coverage, it is representing the fold or the stack or the power of the stack. What is the meaning of this? That means that this point has been covered four times. This point has been covered for four times. It's something like the resolution, okay? The power for this point or the image or the trace here is one, here is two, here is three, here is four. So you are expecting to have the clearest image in this part. This part, which is the four, you will have the highest resolution in this section, in this part. What we are expecting to see under this common midpoint, the trace, as we explained at the beginning, okay? So this is the power or the stack power of the trace here. It is recorded four times. Here it is recorded only one time. Okay. I hope this is clear because this is a really important uh, part. Okay. Let's go uh, through the video. So here we have the stack power is four. This is the distance from shot to shot is called shot point interval. And the distance between G phone and the hydrophone or the receiver, it is called the receiver interval. The common midpoint is the distance, the half distance between the shot and the receiver. Let's go to another example. Okay, the symmetric spread is having the shot in, in the middle and group of receiver and group of receiver. This example will be the same as the previous one, but here, for example, he was moving every 50. The shoot point interval was every 50 from here to here. Now he will increase or double the shoot point interval. It will be every 100, for example. Okay, let's see what we, what is going to happen.
See now, he moved double the distance that we moved in the previous example. So simply, what's going to happen that the fold will be minimized, will be halved, because he missed a point. This is the same number of shots, but the fold now or the maximum coverage or the maximum point will be only two. Again, I will, let me explain it again. Here, he's moving. Let me show you the, the movement from point to point, okay? Okay, see, he moves every 50 from this to this and from this to this, okay? So he is covering more points. Here, when he goes every 100, we cover less points, okay? From here to here. To here, that's 100 meter from here to here. So he misses some points. He do not cover all the points as we did in the previous example. So the coverage will be less. That's what is called the stack or the power of the trace. The number where the point has been covered. Let me go to the third example, which is the asymmetric spread. Asymmetric spread. We had before a symmetric spread. The asymmetric spread, as you can see, the shot starts from the beginning and followed by the receiver. We will go for the first division, which is the 50 meter one. So you move every 50. Again, that's the first shot. Then he will move the second shot. We will have like this. Okay. Again, we will have here the highest point covered, it's four, okay? And the, on, the, on the edges, it will be covered less, less coverage. What, what, why do we are doing this two different spread, uh, symmetric spread and asymmetric spread? As you can see, as you can see here, that the highest coverage is from this point to this point. It is limited here, okay? Because it started from the middle. But the asymmetric, as it started from the beginning, you will have a high fold or higher coverage for this part. It's more, it's giving more resolution or more higher coverage than the symmetric one, okay? That's a quick comparison. I will go back to the slides. Of course, in our full course, there will be more details than this, but that's just to give you some knowledge, some important knowledge, actually. So. Okay, back to the slides. So as uh, we just show an example for the uh, acquisition. Okay, slide mode. So, so we have one of the uh, acquisitions called marine or, or uh, offshore acquisition. It is uh, where vessel use one or two air gun as a source. This is uh, the, the, the ship or the, or the boat. Okay, and we have here two different, this is called a gun array first source and another gun array, second source, and a set of receivers behind, and they are connected with streamer, okay? So we have the chip, the source, 
or the guns first and second, okay, and set of streamers, and on the streamers the hydrophones are hanged. For the land, it is different. Land acquisition operation is more difficult than marine due to numerous type of terrain and near surface problem. Land energy source are explosive and vibrosized. The phone is the receiver in the land acquisition. In the marine, the receiver is called the hydrophone, okay? And the air source is air gun release high pressure, which reflect back on the layer below the sea surface. We have uh, one of the kind of acquisition is called the transition. The transition zone, uh, zone is shallow water between land and marine, where we also cannot install full seismic survey. In this case, both G phone and the hydrophone are used because sometimes you have uh, 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 water, so you use the hydrophone, and as you go to the shore or to the land, you go the you, you choose the hydrophone. We have something called OBC, the ocean bottom cable. The ocean bottom cable contains four C receiver on the ocean bottom. Converted wave, shear wave, or S wave cannot be transmitted through liquid, therefore cannot be captured by the streamer method. However, shear wave can be created within the rock at interface. The OBC process or uh, the OBC method or technique give us an advantage to have all kinds of waves. Uh, I think most of you uh, studied this in the college, the uh, converted wave, shear wave, or S wave. So the ocean bottom technique give us the advantage to record these kind of waves. We have another type of acquisition, which you called 4D. 4D is simply like 3D seismic acquisition, but it in function of time. to so monitor the change, in active reservoir. So you use the same settings of, of acquisition to produce the same seismic along the years. So this one, for example, 1994 until 2008. You produce the same seismic along the year to monitor what is happening inside the reservoir along the years. Now I will go to the OPN the ocean bottom nodes, which is the uh, most recent uh, technique now used in seismic. I will give you a brief about it, the OBN layout and why OBN is used. Okay, for the OBC acquisition or the marine, you have two sets or two boats, okay? And this is the layout or the streamer, which has the hydrophone on it. For the node acquisition or OBN, you don't have to get a ship for the streamer because you already put nodes uh, inside the, uh, uh, on, on the, on the ocean surface, okay, on the bottom. You put the sets of nodes down, Okay, so you don't have you don't need to have two two ships. For example, this is one of the advantage. Let me show you a quick video how this node is working. It's really interesting. Okay, uh, as you can see here, you have rig here and different different rigs, okay? Normally, in normal cases, uh, in uh, marine or OBC, you cannot do acquire data beside or below because you cannot pass the ship or the cables, okay? Let's see what is the ocean bottom node will do in this case.
this is the nodes the set okay it is planted or distributed on the bottom like this you can see it is it's planted okay can you see this this is the, the reg okay the node is planted down here okay this is the nodes and normally you cannot acquire data in the in because the streamer is floating up so you cannot acquire any data no cable re related noise no cable at all actually using uh, doing acquisition without cables it has a lot of advantages so now the nodes are planted okay the nodes are planted this process is very quick it is really very very quick one to plan the nodes and to recollect them it is very fast faster than normal acquisition after this the sound wave is emitted or the seismic and recorded then it is collected like you can see now so i will go back to this part here because this is one of the advantage, most important advantage of the OPN or the ocean bottom nodes. Our receiver set is planted on the ocean bottom, okay? Normally, the acquisition is done on the surface while the streamer is uh, has the, uh, the, the hydrophone towed into it. So it is limited on, if you can go back here. You cannot do acquisition here. You cannot move the, 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 the ship beside the rig. It is lim there is a limitation. But here, you can plant, look, the nodes directly beside. So now you can collect data uh, clear or below, uh, below the rig, okay? That's one of the advantages of the OBN. And also the process itself of the acquisition to plant the node is very quick. It is very quick, and by the at, at the end, the process of collecting them is also very quick. So you have faster acquisition and you acquire more data. Okay. I will go back now to the uh, slides. So why OBN? OBN is a multi-component seismometer located on the seafloor, which could independently collect and record seismic signals. OPN do not need cable to transmit the data, which make it flexible tool result in higher quality data. OBN can acquire data below the platform. Streamer cannot do this. Actually, this is the difference or a difference in resolution between OBC and OBN. So as you can see, the seismic resolution is higher than the streamer one. Okay, I will end up with this uh, slide, the uh, survey design. Okay. The goal of conventional processing is to obtain a 3D volume of seismic image of the subsurface. Image quality from migration depend on the stack quality and accuracy of the velocity field. Let me explain this. Okay, uh, I always make sure to, to have some points, uh, what I've just explained to you and uh, this point as well, the survey design, so the previous explanation and this point, uh, you can see it is varied from uh, entry level or uh, amateur level to 
a little bit intermediate and the higher level. So uh, I always make sure, I need to make sure that uh, all the attendees can make benefit from these slides, okay? You are not always under, uh, can capture all the, uh, all the technical points, but uh, I'm trying to have variable technical information so all of you can make benefit of this. So, so uh, bear me, because survey design point is a little bit advanced point, but I would like to explain it to you as much as I can. Okay, we will explain the survey design point in, 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 in two slides. The first one, we have some observations, okay? The migration itself is part of the processing sequence, okay? You do acquisition, processing, and interpretation. The migration step is one of the processing sequence that we will explain it, uh, in day two tomorrow, okay? This is the main target of the processing is to do the migration. The migration quickly, what is a migration definition? It is the change of the uh, seismic from uh, a point to a different point. So it can simulate the original geological settings. Okay, I will explain it in, in details tomorrow. So what's uh, happening here? We have migration moves event C dash D dash on the time section to its true subsurface position. Okay, C dash D dash will be moved upward. Okay, we have this reflection, it will be moved upward to C D point. Migration steepness reflector, dip angle of the reflector in geological section is greater than that in time section. Migration shortens the reflector. The length of CD in geological section is shorter than that in time section. Migration moves the reflector in the up dip direction. If line lengths were confined to OA during recording, then the time section would be blank. If the recording were confined to AB, then event C dash D dash would be absent from migrated section. Okay, let me explain it here. Here we have this point O and A and B. Okay, what we are doing in the migration part that we move this C dash D dash and we do migration. The migration is a process where the reflection it changes from a position to another real position. Another real position similar to the geological settings or geological position. So C dash D dash is corresponding to this part AB on the surface, okay? So in order to move this C dash D dash into real position CD, you should have coverage here the OA, okay, because CD, if you extended this up here to the surface, it will be covered under this part. So the summary of this figure, that if you have your acquisition only between A and B, if you have your acquisition only between A and B and you try to migrate C dash D dash to CD, you will have a blank. You don't have a result because you don't have this point O. Again, in another word, in order to do the migration, in order to move this reflection to this part, you have to have a full coverage from A to B. That's in summary. That's the simple, the simplest way I can tell you. So, and in the same time, you cannot have only OA. You need to have from O to B, the acquisition to B from O to B. So whenever you do migration for, the, from, for this part to this part, it is covered, okay? That's just in, 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 in summary. Uh, of course, this uh, all of what I said today, let me go again through these slides from the beginning. I know that the survey design point, it was a little bit uh, hard or advanced, but it's really important and you can read more about it. So what we have said today simply is uh, 
why we do use seismic method or why seismic method is preferable than other method in oil and gas exploration because uh, it has a higher resolution than other method like gravity and magnetic okay and we went through uh, some uh, definitions wave wave front ray path the wave parameter of course in the full course there are much more definition than this but i tried as much as i can to give you uh, one or two of them the reflection or the reflection coefficient hopefully you got this and under and uh, you understood why we do have peak or trough it is uh, uh, depending on this equation of uh, reflection coefficient when it is negative it is trough and when it is positive it is peak and this happened due to the variation of density and velocity from layer to layer then we uh, i showed you the video for uh, explaining the fold or how the acquisition is is, uh, is done and what is the fold and how it is calculated and the symmetric and asymmetric layout and the differences between 2d and 3d layout okay and the advantage of the 3d and some of the advantage of the 2d different kind of acquisition marine land transition obc 4d and the obn which is the most recent technique nowadays and what is the advantage of the opn so that's uh, all for today and for tomorrow we are going to talk about the